Well, good morning, and welcome to St. Michael Lutheran in the Spirited Life on this uh, so snowy second uh, Sunday of November. I'm not sure we're quite ready for this, are we? Oh, maybe Doug is, I don't know, but um, many of us probably aren't. But we're here to worship the Lord here today and look forward to all that He has prepared for us. Uh, it's great to have you here with us today, those that are joining us at home via live stream and those gathered in the sanctuary this day. We certainly look forward to a mighty movement of the Lord's Spirit this day. A couple announcements as we make our start today. A reminder uh, that faith giving cards for 2022 will be due next uh, weekend. Uh, there's a red box on the coffee bar that they can be deposited in. If you're not yet worshiping with us in person, you can continue to mail them in as some of you've done or drop them off during the week. Um, these will be dedicated during the worship services next weekend, all three services, but placed in the red box because of COVID concerns. We will not be bringing them forward as we did not last year, but they will still be dedicated at the altar. This is a commitment between you and God that we invite you to continue to pray over and reflect on today's service where we'll be talking about these. And again, um, motivated ultimately by what Christ has done for us. And no one else sees this. This commitment is dedicated at the altar, sealed, and then the cards are destroyed. If you need an additional card, you can find them at the coffee bar. It's probably hard to think in some respects that Thanksgiving is coming up so quickly, but it is. And to that end, our Thanksgiving Eve worship service will be Wednesday, the 24th of this month, 7 p.m. So please make note of that. And speaking of Thanksgiving and turkey and all the good stuff that goes with that, uh, we have the opportunity again to provide turkeys for families who are in need this year. We're doing this in conjunction with uh, Open Door uh, Food Bank as well as the Hope Medical Clinic. So if you'd be interested, $20 will provide a turkey. Uh, we have little turkey donation slips that you can grab from the bulletin boards, which have now, with the construction, been moved a little further down this hallway. Look for the big turkey on the board. You can grab a slip, and these are due in the next week. So either this weekend or during the weekdays of this week. Uh, again, a, a check, cash, whatever, and an envelope, uh, and that will help make a better Thanksgiving for a number of people. Also, uh, we have the 2022 offering envelopes available for those that still use the paper envelopes. They're on a table in the Narthex lobby. Be sure to grab those. Those worshiping at home who aren't back yet with us, if you'd like those mailed to you, just let the church office please know that. And with that, I'd like to throw it to Adam for an announcement. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Good morning, family, on this beautiful snowy day. That's not really an oxymoron. Welcome to those of you worshiping with us uh, virtually. So I, I need some help at the end of the service today. And here's the deal. Tomorrow, the platform carpeting is going in as another piece of our renovations. And everything, save only the grand piano, has to come off stage. Everything. All right? So many things. You'll know how to move the furniture piece of it. And I'll be here to direct traffic and help with gear organ console, the whole deal. So literally everything has to get crashed. So if you can spare 20 minutes after service, if we could get a crew of, you know, 10, 12 people to just do this, it would be absolutely fantabulous as a technical term. So if you will just meet up here, I will direct traffic after service. Thank you so, so, so much, Pastor Tim. Thank you, Adam. And with that, let's check out our opening theme video.
one of the things, uh, in addition to all the we gives that were mentioned here, is we have the opportunity, opportunity to give God a relationship with us. And one way we do that is through prayer. So let us now join together in, in a time of prayer. And during this time, if you have particular prayer needs for yourself, please focus those during this time as we lift up both generic prayers as well as prayers for specific people in our fellowship. <clears throat> Lord, gathered today, we have so many things, Lord, that we want to talk to you about. Lord, we stand with those who are offering prayers of thanksgiving today for blessings that have been poured out or answered prayers. Uh, Lord, we know there's been people who have been praying for others. Lord, intercessing. Lord, we stand with those prayers. Lord, for those who have had uh, particular financial concerns or needs this week, Lord, we know you are the great provider. Lord, you do provide for our needs. Lord, for relationships that are broken, we pray that healing can be restored and relationship and interactions with those that we love that might be going through a rough patch right now. Lord, for those with health and issues, Lord, we uh, just stand with them. And Lord, we have a number of people in our community that have asked for prayers of healing. Lord, Ron Malagian, Joan Vary, Amy Plotz, Kathy Lynn, Charlotte Van Halle, Judy Noel, Jamie Glotz, Betty Pajagabo, Mike Namola, Marge Hickman, Dave Collins, and Jim Harb. Lord, though these people are going through health crisis at this moment, in this time, Lord, we pray that they can have a time of comfort and rest. Lord, let them feel your presence, your loving arms around them. Lord, we pray for their caregivers and those who love them. Lord, those who are praying for them. Lord, for the caregivers and the doctors and the nurses and the people running lab tests and that will be part of surgeries and, and ongoing treatment. Lord, uh, this whole system is put in place. Lord, it's because the gifts that you gave others that they are doctors and nurses and technicians. Lord, we thank you for their skills that you've given them. Lord, uh, let each and every one of these people, Lord, know how much you love them, see you as the greatest of all physicians. And Lord, we just uh, stand with them and, and pray for their recoveries. Lord, all this we pray in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Now let's continue with the time of uh, praise and worship. Please rise.
set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself Lead me, Lord, I pray Take me, mold me, use me, fill me I give up my life to the Father's hand Call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside Yes. Yeah. 
Thank you, praise band. Please be seated. Our first lesson for today is found in 2 Corinthians, the ninth verse, or the ninth chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. Remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Here ends our first lesson for today. Our gospel is found in Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Please stand as you are able. Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This concludes our gospel lesson for this morning. Let us join now together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and uh, turn it over to Adam for today's children's message. Thank you, Greg. And will all my young friends join me up here at the platform, please? Please, please, please. Come on down. Oh, my heavens. Whoa. Hey there, Miss Lydia. Come on down. You're the next contestant somewhere. <laughs> Well, while folks are coming down, uh, I want to especially greet my folks that are vir uh, worshiping virtually here. I'm Adam Mercento. I'm the worship director here at St. Michael Lutheran Church. And uh, if you're visiting with us today, thank you so much for being here. And it is, it is such a pleasure to be here uh, to visit with all of you. So most of you know that I used to be the children's and family pastor here at St. Michael, right? And uh, when I was here as the children's and family pastor, we often... Got a chance to reach into the Tubbo stuff, all right? And we had a prize bucket, for because sometimes you might uh, answer a question and, or, or do something on a quiz or do something nice for somebody else, and you had a chance to go in there, reach in there, and see what, what, what the prize might be, although you couldn't look at it, right? So you never knew what it would be, right? But generally, it'd be something fun, right? Fair enough, okay? So how does it feel when somebody gives you something? Feels good, right? 
how does it feel when you give something to somebody else? Yeah, it does feel good, doesn't it? You know, especially when you share, it feels good to share. That's, a, that's something that, that God has laid on us. And uh, well, let me ask you this. Why do we take an offering here at church? Because God certainly doesn't need our money. So other people can have it, so we can do things for other people, sure. What are some really practical reasons we might take an offering here at church? Okay, for the body of Christ, absolutely. What? Why isn't it dark in here right now? Yeah, because the lights are on. All right. What, does that happen if the light bill doesn't get paid? <laughs> no. Okay, so the, 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 the church building needs some money, right? And, and we've got to pay the bills, right? Uh, you know, Pastor Tim and I love Jesus, and, and we would do an awful lot of work for free, but we also have to feed our families, so, so you know, we, staff has to get paid, those kinds of things. So God doesn't need money directly, but some bills need to get paid, right? Well, let me ask you something here. In this box here, I have some treasure, all right? And we're going to take out some of these treasures here. And uh, God asks us to give what's called a tithe. A tithe means one-tenth, 10%, okay? And um, he doesn't need our money, but he does want us to show him that we trust him. And let me give you an example here. So each one of these is going to represent a dollar. Of course, it's fake money. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what God is saying to us is, he says, hey, look, you're my people. I'm going to take care of you. Okay? And there's a whole bunch of blessings in my prize bucket that I can unlock if you come alongside me as a partner. So he says, before you spend any money on anything else, before you pay your bills, before you buy food, but just give me one out of ten. He doesn't ask for five. He asks for one. And if your bills were nine dollars, pretty it's not that big of a deal to give God one, is it? You got ten. God says, give me one. Pay your bills on the nine. It's not a big deal. What if you knew your bills were going to be all 10? What if you knew your bills were going to be 15 and you only had 10? What if you knew it was going to be 50 and you only had 10? Would it be a little harder to give God one first? It would be harder. It would be harder. That's where the trust comes in. But that's what he asked us to do. And he asked us to do that to show him, God, I trust you. I trust that no matter how bad off I might be right now, you're going to take care of me. That's what it's for. And he even says, you can test me. Can you imagine that, testing God? Right? This is one area where he says, test me. Do this thing, and I'll bless you. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to give you money. But maybe he makes us happier. Maybe he helps us feel joy. Maybe he gives us some healing. All kinds of different blessings out of God's prize bucket. So each of you, when someone gives you $10 as a present, save one for God. When you earn a dollar, save a dime for God. Get in that habit. Because you will unlock blessings that wouldn't be had otherwise. I promise. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to give back just a little bit of what you have uh, given to us, Lord. Help us to have the discipline and the trust in you to know that you're going to take care of us no matter what. Bless these children as they go to Bible time or sit back with their parents and help us not to have fear of giving back to you what is rightfully yours. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. And you may all grab yourself a quick prize from the Tubbo stuff. Here we go, quick. And what do we got there? Okay, up top. There we go. One, two, three. And there it is. What is it? What's going? And who knows what that's going to be? Here we go. And head off to Miss. Head off with Miss Cassie to Bible time. All righty. Come on. There you go. All righty. All right, and we will hear from my friends in the band. Oh
was never mine at all. You are the one inside, always in control. team. It's a, it's a pleasure to worship with you today. I sure appreciate you. Well, good morning again, family. It is a real honor to be here to visit with you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart for a whole host of reasons. So will you pray with me, please? God, let the words of my mouth be pleasing to you. Teach us and grow us today through your word and through me as you see fit for such a time as this. So, well, we're in the middle of a series on giving and on stewardship and what, what that means. And as we know, and as Pastor Tim talked about last week, uh, there's only two things we can give, right? We can give our time and we can give our money. And he talked about how to wisely invest our time last week. Pastor Dave is going to dig in next week on service and how we serve and the heart with which we serve and those types of things. And you guessed it, I'm here to talk about money. And here's the thing. While money isn't everything, and God certainly doesn't need it directly, here on earth it ranks right up there with oxygen, as Jim Rohn used to say, right? So let's get the elephant out of the room right now because I'm not afraid to close the sale, all right? Sometime today and at the end of this, while it is not a competition and it's going to look very, very different for every single person here, I'm going to ask you to up your game, okay? I'm going to ask you to commit to growing in your giving from wherever you're at now. 
Faith giving cards have started coming in. This congregation has always been incredibly faithful. All right? No one's going to look at them. No one's going to see whose name is on. And no, 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 no. This is between you and God. But can we agree when we write something down, it's a different kind of commitment? Okay, that's why the card is there. Okay. So I'm here to offer a little guidance and a few thoughts I'm giving from my story and experience. All right? And I would never recycle a sermon. But I spoke on this last year, too. And I really wrestled with how to approach this because there were so many things last year that I really wanted to bring today, and I couldn't. There's just not enough time. So, technology to the rescue. You can get out your cell phone, and you can text the church phone number, 734-459-3333, and go directly to last year's message by texting the keyword, up my game, and following the link there. All right, we go ahead and leave that up for a little bit so folks can write that down if they want to, because I think there's some things there that might help. Because we're kind of coming at some of these things from a different angle. That said, uh, there is no new truth. All right? So some of this is going to sound familiar no matter what. But uh, I do urge you to, to review that message. But we're going to rewind at least a little bit of a crash course of kind of where we had le headed last year, okay? Now, first of all, this is near and dear to my heart because when Colleen and I finally quit the debating society and committed to tithe even though we were flat broke, our life changed immeasurably. And for the better. Hence the title today, Just Do It. Last year I titled this message, Tithes and Offerings, Don't Knock It Till You've Tried It. And today could easily have been part two of that. So again, I'd really encourage you to go back and take a look at that. But here are some, some of the things we looked at. We looked at Old Testament giving, which is the tithe. 10% off the top. It's an amount, it's a proportion, right? And then we looked at how it's referred to in the, in, the, in the New Testament, which doesn't really deal with that specifically at all, but it talks about the heart with which we give and saying God loves a cheerful giver, okay? And we talked about how it, it's not either or, but really both, okay? First we get to a tithe, then we look beyond that you know, kind of thing. We looked at the difference between a tithe and an offering, okay? The tithe is the minimum God asks us to, to give, and the offering is what we do on top of that after we've met our obligations. Okay? We talked about not giving out of duty, but because God promises to bless us if we exercise this particular spiritual discipline to the point that he even says we can test him. Now, I don't know about you, family, but if God says I can test him, my ears perk up a little bit. All right? In polite circles, we call that a clue. I reflected on my own story on tithing and what it's meant to our household and family, and I shared both the fear and the blessings around conquering that fear to the point now in our household, we won't even consider not tithing. It is simply not an option in our household anymore. Then I encouraged us all to get really honest about why we might not be tithing and to give it a try. So again, if any of those topics resonate, go ahead and review last year's uh, message, or you can scroll down uh, on our YouTube page and find it that way. So, and, and ultimately, in both lessons, th this is about the discernment that we all need on an individual basis as a couple, as a household, to, to give as God is calling us to, to give. And it's going to look different. But last year, we kind of focused more through the lens about, like, why wouldn't we do this? This year, we're going to look a little more deeply into why we should. Okay, so if you're ready... For part two, say, I'm ready. You ready? All right. Cool, me too. Take what you want and leave the rest. This is my story. You may relate, you may not. You might be like, well, you know, whatever, whatever the bald guy said. All right. But uh, here's the thing. What this message is not is a shakedown. It is also not any kind of referendum on where you are in your financial life. All right. That is between you and God. All right. We have been flusher than flush, we have been broker than broke, and no judgment here at all. What it is, though, is a nudge to look at whether or not your giving habits are causing you pain or bringing you joy, and whether it's causing you to experience God's blessings or to miss out on some of those extra blessings. And it's hopefully a convicting call to take action that will grow and deepen the spiritual discipline of giving based on where you're at right now. And to be honest, to take a really honest look at where God is leading you and the barriers you might have around taking the next steps on your giving path. I believe strongly that there is no such thing as the status quo. 
I've been an educator and a trainer a long time, and we're either moving forward or we're going back. That's just me. That's just me. So why give? Well, the theme video gave us a really great list. So let's review it and unpack a few of them, shall we? We give because Christians are still being persecuted for their faith. Suicide bombings, beheadings, trafficking, and laws that literally target Christians and other religious minorities with fines, prison, or execution still exist today. And money helps the organizations that can give them some relief or get them out, right? We give because 1.5 billion, with a B, people live and die in extreme poverty. Let's take one issue alone. Over 2 million Americans and 700 million people worldwide live without clean drinking water alone. An estimated 829,000 people worldwide die from, ready, diarrhea. As a result of unsafe drinking water, sanitation, and hand hygiene. It's a big number. What if it was only half of that? God gives some folks the ability to go places physically to help, and the rest of us, frankly, he gives us a checkbook. We give because our neighbors haven't encountered Christ, family, or worse yet, they're one of the hundreds of thousands leaving the church because as a body of a Christ, we have done a really lousy job conveying the love of Jesus instead of the judgment of humans and Satan. And we give because through giving, they might encounter him either because of something we do or say directly or from a mission we supported. We give to usher in God's kingdom and be part of something bigger than ourselves. See, on an individual basis, we make a, a, a huge difference. We can buy someone lunch. We can give them a hat when they're cold. We can give away the things we're no longer using. We can, we can do all of those things, and we should lend a hand. But the way to expand our reach is through our giving. When we give to the local church... Yeah, we keep the lights on and we do all those things that are important, but we also expand our reach to the neighborhood and the community and our nation and our world. And if we help somebody find Jesus, we expanded our reach into eternity. We give because indifference was not an option for Jesus Christ and should not be an option for us. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 23 to 24, Jesus calls out complacency, and he chastises the leaders for giving purely out of obligation, letter of the law, but not really doing anything to help. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17 to 19, this, this version is from the message, it says, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Tell them to go after God, who piles on all the riches we could ever manage, to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. Now, to be clear, okay, some of us are, are still working to get to that tithe, okay? So again, we have to, you know, we, we have to seek God and where we're at and what we're supposed to do, okay? But if we can give more and we don't, uncool. If we can serve, if we can serve and don't, uncool. Right? God is saying that we're all supposed to participate. And even financially, even if we're on our backsides, we can all get started. More on that later. Friends, we give to change both our world and our hearts. And while our world gets, while our, our, our world gets changed when we band together, imagine what it would be like to be free from some of the strongholds that bind us inside. Anxiety, insecurity, fear. See, God doesn't wave a magic wand like a wizard. Like a good parent, he knows that we need to have skin in the game to make some blessings be taken seriously. So he gives us spiritual disciplines. He gives us prayer. He gives us fasting. He gives us giving. So we can show him 
we're in the game. Now, I'll be clear about something. This has zero to do with your salvation. All right? Once you've invited Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, you have taken the step to be on the path to a better life on earth and, the, and to, to live in eternity with the Father instead of being damned to hell, which is the afterlife we truly deserve. Okay? You can't buy it. You can't do anything. You can't work it into it. None of that. Okay? These are two separate topics, friends. But in my experience, this does show God that we're ready for the extra blessings. We give because worship is for one true God, and it's not money. We read earlier in Matthew 6, verses 19 to 24, that we are not to store up for ourselves treasures on earth, that we can't serve both God and money. And this is not in any way suggesting that we shouldn't prudently be investing for retirement or that it's wrong to have a nice lifestyle, right? Jesus said, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly, right? Nothing wrong with that, but it is talking about stockpiling wealth for the sake of accumulating, right, or out of greed, or more insidiously, out of fear, the fear that God won't really provide for our needs. If God is who he says he is, then we must grow beyond this stronghold. We give because we were bought at an immensely high price. Friends, Jesus bled and died on that cross so that you and I might live with the Father. Who are we not to give what we can so that others might have a fighting chance? We give because God gave, continues to give, and will never stop giving. Giving shows God that we recognize that he owns everything anyway. Everything we have is a gift from him, cultivated alongside him with our work. You know, we're, we're commanded to go alongside of him, right? And to roll up our sleeves and, and, and work. He doesn't give us money. He gives us talents. He gives us opportunities. Right? He doesn't give us tables and chairs. He gives us trees, tools, and brains right? To go alongside him. Secondly, if we are going to learn to be more like Jesus, we must work to do what Jesus did. And Jesus hoarded nothing. Why else do we give? Because God asks us to have skin in the game so that he can unlock the extra blessings. Well, what kind of blessings come from tithing? Well, I really believe that God has a box of blessings with your name on it with mine to say I want to give you more but I need you to come alongside of me what parent, manager, teacher hasn't said to the folks they're mentoring hey I'll do this or I'll give this but I need you to do this got some sin in the game right well he's a good dad okay what might those blessings be? Well, they might be financial. Maybe that's health. Maybe it's a strong marriage. Maybe it's healing emotionally or from trauma. Maybe it's a child you never thought you could have. Maybe it's added discernment or the ability to hear God's voice. Maybe it's your feeling of contentment, peace, and joy, and isn't that alone worth it? If you're like me several years ago, this makes perfect sense in your brain, intellectually, and you're smiling and nodding, and uh-huh, that makes great sense, Adam. I'm in. I get what you're saying. We should all just do it and give up the fear and, 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 and give and tithe 10%. I'm in. We're going to exercise the spiritual disciplines. Go team. Just do it. But why is it so hard? Why can't we just do it? Well, I can't tell you what it is for you. All I can tell you is why I had so much darn trouble, okay? I researched, I studied, I sought counsel, I wrestled, I prayed for discernment. God, should I give the tithe? Should I, quote, give until it hurts a little? Should I tithe while in debt? Right? Chatter, 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 chatter. Here it is, in, out. Bottom line for me is I knew darn well what God was calling me to do, and the only thing keeping me from doing it was fear. Why? Real simple, real human. We were young and we were broke. 
And Satan knows that if he can get us to tap into fear instead of faith, which cannot live alongside each other, that he's got us. He can pull us away from God, and I'm telling you, family, he had me by the neck. Ever try to do one too many reps at the gym? And now you're pinned. That's what it was for me. And I would have done nearly anything out of my desperation to be free from some of those strongholds. Maybe you can relate. In our house, we've had variable income most of our working life. And let's face it, when we're flush, it's a whole lot easier to share. It's tougher when we have to go out on a limb and trust that the mortgage will still get paid if we give the tithe anyway. I I can still picture us praying over the check. (laughs) With, incidentally, the mortgage payment. Once we did, everything changed. Friends, I cannot urge you strongly enough to quit the debating society and just do it. Fear will bind us. Put another way, I have a serious trust issue. Serious trust issue. See, I thought God would take care of everybody else except me. I didn't understand His grace. Trusting God looked great on paper, even in the Scripture. Here's a few examples. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, you can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. Not some, everything you need. And His generosity exceeds even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 46, He says, I am your God and will take care of you until you are old and your hair is gray. Or gone, in my case, right? I made you and will care for you, and I will give you help and rescue you. So I'll provide and I'll protect you, is what he's saying, right? In Matthew chapter 6, he says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? The examples in Scripture go on for pages, and ultimately, as 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, but in my broken humanity, I needed something a little more practical. I needed to see the evidence of God's goodness and protection in my life directly to latch on to this. So here's a few. Through very difficult financial times early in our married life, even before tithing, our bills got paid. That's God. When a teenage driver pulled out in front of my truck in 2001, and I T-boned her, and I mean, I sent her across two lanes... And then my truck stops about 18 inches from a telephone pole. That young lady and I both could have been killed. But I went home to Colleen that night. That's God. And on a hot summer night in July without air conditioning, I fell asleep on the couch and later groggily went upstairs to bed, accidentally leaving the front porch window open, coming downstairs the next morning to a cut screen, a stolen backpack, laptop, grad school books, and some money out of my wallet, all of which at the end of the day are annoyances instead of the unthinkable that might have happened while my wife and infant son and I were asleep upstairs. That is God. My list goes on for pages, so I'm here to tell you there's not one thing you can say to me that will make me doubt that God's provision and protection are real and that he is who he says he is. What's on your list? Dig in and ask God to show you the evidence of how he's protected you and provided for you. I promise you it will help you combat the lies the evil one tries to share with us that God will take care of everybody but you. Or that God isn't who he says he is. You see, when Satan lies to us, it's the most insidious thing ever because he takes little bits of truth and warps them. As we close this out, let's look at some principles and some action steps, okay? 
again, at the end of the day, you have to prayerfully work out with God how much and in what way you're going to give, and nobody else can do it for you. But let's get honest. We can all give something, and I can let you know what we do as an illustration, okay? In our house, we take it off the top, tithe off the gross. Why? Because we just figure when paying taxes, you know, rendering under, uh, to Caesar what is Caesar's, that comes off the gross, so I figure, okay, why should God get a different standard? So that's what we do. Did we tithe while we were in debt? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because tithe is fulfilling the command, and in our household, financial blessing didn't even remotely begin to unlock until long after we had been tithing faithfully, consistently, when it was hard. Now, offerings above that waited until, until we were meeting our obligations. I recommend going for the gold. Pray and fast for discernment on this. Practice two spiritual disciplines to gain wisdom from God on a third one. And here's the thing. Fear, the level of fear I had around this was straight up a demon. All right, and there are some demons and some things that can't be cast out without prayer and fasting. Jesus said. So I figure, just start there. Let's be efficient here. Study the scripture. You know there's over 2,000 scriptures about money? 2,000. So maybe God's saying, it's an important topic. Here's the thing, friends. Remember that giving is not about the amount. It's about discipline. It's about trust, and it's about believing that God is who he says he is, and that he'll do what he says he'll do. That's why it's a percentage, a proportion. Your income might fluctuate, all right? It might go away temporarily. You might lose a job. 10% is also an amount that most of us can either do or get to over time, right? Right? Remember, your picture's going to look like someone else. This isn't, this isn't a sprint. It's a marathon, right? Is 10% required? Well, this, of course, is where the big debate is, isn't it? Right? You've got to work it out. You've got to work that out with God. Here's what I can tell you. It might not be required anymore, but what if it could unlock more blessings, prosperity, and freedom? Freedom from our strongholds. Stuff that binds us up. Now, I've learned that God's way is better than mine. And he laid out the 10% plan. So I just figure, I'm done debating. I'm just going to do it. Okay. And God told us to test him on this one. So try it for 30, 60, or 90 days. This, is, this deal is not permanent. You can go back. <laughs> if it doesn't change your outlook. So I encourage you to commit to growing in your giving. All right, there is no status quo. So what could that look like? Well, continue giving and up your game if you feel that God is nudging you to do so. Maybe you're at a tithe, and that feels easy. Well, if it feels easy, you could probably do a little more. Maybe upping, up, upping your game is, you know, you're at 1%, and over the next year or two, you're going to get to 2 Start giving if you're not giving yet. There is always a way to get started, all right? And let's get honest here. I know I'm not the only one who blows a buck or two at the gas station on a pop or a pack of gum or the vending machine at work, right? Oh, but that's only a couple of bucks. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Because all God's looking for is, do you trust me? But you don't know my situation. You don't know how broke I am. I've lost a job. My business is, is, is toast. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I'm on food stamps. I'm... You get it? It's not about the money. It's about the blessing. It's about the blessings and the work that won't get done here on earth if we don't chip in a little. Most importantly... It's about the joy that comes from knowing that we're living in obedience to God's will. And I promise you there's no safer place to be. I urge you, build your list of evidence. 
on how God has blessed you. You got a list. And dig into the things that maybe you just didn't even think about. Oh, that happened. Isn't that neat? Boy, what a stroke of luck. Boy, wasn't that cool timing? Friends, that's God. Recognize it as the truth. The truth that will what? Set you free. All right? The truth about who Christ is and what he did for you and for me. Quit the debating society about giving. And just do it. You will not regret it. You will not regret it. Will you pray with me? Lord, help us to discern how much and in what way we are to give back to you. Help us trust your provision and your love. And help us let go of the fear. And put obedience to you first to unlock the amazing blessings you have in store for us. And most importantly, reach those in this room that don't know who you are. And don't yet know the joy and perfect peace that comes from asking you into their lives. Friends, if you don't know Jesus, you can change your life in the blink of an eye. Pray with me now, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Help me to live for you the rest of this life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, you just took a step on the greatest journey you'll ever encounter. (laughs) Because you just took a step to life with Jesus. And I can tell you, for me, here was my life without Jesus. And then Jesus came into my life. And here's my life after Jesus. And this way is so much better. It is so much better. We can help you with next steps on that. See Pastor Tim or one of the elders or me or whatever after the service or fill out the the guest card. All right, we'll give you a call this week. Quit the debating society. Just do it. Amen. invite you to rise as we continue in a time of prayer, praying the words our Lord and Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reminder that following the service, Adam could use some help. Any able-bodied people, a lot of hands make the load light. So if you could stay back and and help, that would be greatly appreciated. And then also, as we've mentioned today, if you are in need of an additional faith-giving card, they are on the coffee bar by the red box. And again, this is our opportunity, just you and God. Motivation is out of the great love, the gospel of Jesus and what he's done for us. With that, let us close. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with his favor and grant us his perfect peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We worship our Lord. Thank you.
in every season from where I'm standing. I see the evidence of your goodness. pastor here at St. Michael Lutheran Church. I want to thank you for being part of our worship experience today. It means a lot to us. I hope that you were touched by God's Spirit and that your heart was open to Jesus and his love for you. If you'd like to know more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I invite you to contact the church office and just ask to speak with a pastor. You know, we've got all kinds of things here for really every member of the family. Just check things out on the church website or on the church Facebook page. Well, I hope God blesses your week this week, and uh, until next week, we'll, we'll see you in church.